Welcome to the week two go-to session. This is the second session of four that we're holding this month. Remember last week we were sort of on break. I wasn't on break. I attended meetings and continued to grade your work. But we, yeah, we classes were closed, right? Uh, so I hope that everybody enjoyed their July 4th. I hope that everybody found some downtime to enjoy. I realize that for a lot of full sale students, they're juggling multiple issues, a job, two jobs, spouse, partner, family. Okay, so there's a lot on your table. But hopefully maybe last week's little break made things, even if life is hectic, a little bit more breathable. Uh, but yeah, we're back in the full swing of things. The good news is, is that the break allowed us to, well, it allowed me certainly to get ahead of things, right? Because you had to hand in your first writing assignment, the worksheets, the Sunday before last week's off week. Um, so I got all those graded, I think by Thursday, a few people, maybe like early Friday morning or overnight between Thursday and Friday. Uh, but still there, you had time to process that information. Hopefully you've already read the feedback. If you haven't, please do so. Um, and yeah, you have this whole week to consider that feedback, to make adjustments. Because here's the thing, we are working step by step, okay, toward the creation of a single essay, an ad advertisement analysis essay. Um, so the worksheet was about brainstorming, taking a look at the ad, answering those questions on the worksheet. By the way, I, I was very happy with the quality of the worksheets. I can't remember a time I've given out more A's and B's. And even if you if maybe you didn't receive an A or a B, still, uh, my feedback, I always give people help. So if, to me, the most important prompt on that worksheet was number nine, the one that asks you for uh, to take two stabs at writing a thesis, because without a thesis, you cannot move forward. Like this week's major activity. Uh, so here we are in week two, okay? You can see my screen. Uh, same thing as week one. You have assigned readings, you have an achieve module to complete over at McGraw Hill. You have that weekly journal response, okay, where you summarize both the readings and the lecture just to, again, prove to me that you've done it. And if you can do so, I'm more than happy to just give you 100 and move on. Uh, but the major activity here is the 2.5, okay? Step two, organizing. It's an outline. We're going to discuss it in just a moment. But yeah, you cannot move forward to the outline unless you have a working thesis. And I'm not going to repeat what I went over in the week one lecture, but we, we talked about thesis statements. We looked at three sample ads, two car ads, a Diet Coke commercial. And remember, you guys did awesome being able to spot important aspects, elements at work in those ads. And I kept, I think I repeated uh, or at least stressed the importance of threes, okay? To think in terms of threes, you need to identify three important, interesting things going on in your chosen ad. But for people who, let's say, struggled a little bit, because, you know, that's understandable. I don't expect people to uh, have everything clear and, and dandy and perfect on the first try. So I gave people, yeah, a list of ideas. Here are six, seven things going on in the ad. Choose three of them. <laughs> I think even for the people who had awesome thesis statements, I still gave them the full list. Because who knows, maybe you would, uh, when it comes time to write the essay, you find that one of your thesis points you don't really have that much to say about. right? You identified the ads use of music, but come time when you have to actually write the paragraph on the ads use of music, you things peter out after two sentences <laughs> because you're not sure what to say. So yeah, I gave everybody a full list of ideas in case you were struggling to come up with things or because down the road you'd like to swap out things. Uh, so yeah, if you haven't yet, be sure to read your feedback. Oh, let's see. I'm catching up in the chat. Gregory, uh, we were off in week... We did week two already. No, we didn't do week two already. Week two was postponed. So that's a good thing, too. And I did give people a break who were maybe catching up in week one. Um, so that was useful, too. So even people who maybe weren't fully aware could get back on board. So, yeah, we, it, last week's break is helpful to everyone. So, yeah, we're in week two right now. Okay. Um, so, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read the comments and focus. Okay, let's start talking about the outline. Uh, I do have 
a nifty little keynote presentation, and we will get back to it. But I think I'm just going to do something different this month and dive right into the actual assignment itself, okay? Instead of lecturing about it and, <laughs> and showing slides, why don't we just take a look at it? Because I think you'll understand it pretty clearly if we, yeah, actually look at what we're doing. So here is the assignment, okay? <clears throat> now, you, you can read through all these instructions on your own. Uh, I'm going to scroll down to here. Okay. First of all, you have two examples. Every major writing assignment comes with models. I highly recommend studying the models because, listen, people learn in different ways, right? I like to think that I do an amazing job in these lectures, but maybe these sorts of lectures are not uh, a certain student's best way of learning. Okay. So you have other ways. You can study examples and sort of reverse engineer, figuring out, okay, now I get what thesis statements are, or okay, now I see how an essay is organized by just studying examples. So if you click on this link, okay, I'm going to right click on it, uh, you get a past student's example. Okay, there is one tiny flaw. This, uh, this example is actually in a, a slightly different shape and format because we switch things around but still it is it is an example of an outline uh i have my example here so you have a second example remember we looked at a gpad in week one okay i would actually recommend i mean sure look at take a look at both but the outline for the jeep is exactly a model of what you're being asked asked to do and i have the jeep actually i have the blank template see it says outline template use this to complete assignment <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but I do have students who they don't read the instructions and they just see, okay, I have to write an outline. And so they start making up an outline off the top of their heads. No, don't do that. Okay. Uh, in the past, yeah, we used to cover what an outline is and ask students to create one, but lots of students aren't that familiar with outlines. Or you're like me, I, yeah, I don't really outline, or I do, but I do in my head. So to avoid these problems, we actually give you the outline template, okay? We give you the form. You don't have to come up with the outline all by yourself, right? Outlines look like, uh, actually, let me open up a blank document because I'm going to need this later. But remember, outlining, it has like Roman numerals, and then it uses uh, capital letters, and then sometimes it goes to, uh, I think then it goes to numbers, and then lowercase, right? And these things all get indented because there's different levels in information, right? But that can also be accusing, uh, uh, confusing because people sometimes, okay, what, what do the Roman numerals mean? What does this mean? You don't have to worry about any of that because the template already has it set up for you. So let me find the blank template. Uh, wait, that's, yeah, Jeep. What is this? Okay, so there's a completed outline. There's my completed essay. We might take a look at that. Where's the blank? I have a blank. Oh, I hate this. It's confusing to explain, but anytime I have more than three Microsoft Word documents open, I can't find what I'm supposed to. I opened up the blank temp template earlier. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to open it again. Okay, so here, outline template. So here's the blank document. And again, you have a little bit of instructions up here at top, so read those on your own. Let me, let's see, Sean says people have different ways of writing too. This is not how I write, but I can fill out an outline. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't outline because I'm pretty comfortable with structure. And like I said, I do outline technically, but I do it in my head. Um, so yeah, whether you love formal outlines or not, I, I do think it's pretty both easy and less frightening when we give you the template, because you're basically going to fill this with your ideas. Now, let me make one huge caution. Week one, you completed a brainstorming worksheet, right? A template <clears throat> that had 10 prompts and you had to answer the prompts. That is not this. Okay, I do see occasionally, maybe a handful of students every month, who fill out this outline template randomly. They see that there are things being asked and space to put things, and so they answer these things in isolation. That is not what an outline is. Okay, and an outline is a blueprint. It is a, yeah, a, a, a basic structure of your essay. We are aiming for, by the way, a five paragraph essay. So, real quickly, there will be an introduction paragraph. This ends with your thesis statement. 
This is why it's important that I had to look at your thesis statements in the worksheet and either say, looks great, or make a suggestion. Some people had like two awesome thesis points, but sometimes I was a little bit nervous about the third one. So I would sometimes make suggestions for maybe swapping it out for a stronger thing. Uh, but yeah, you have to have a thesis that has three clear analysis points, okay? Because those three analysis points are going to become your three body paragraphs. Because... Uh, oops, I got that backwards. Body paragraph number one, which is your thesis point number one, body pair. You know what? I'm just going to copy this. You don't want to see me type. Okay, so this is body paragraph number two, where you discuss your thes second thesis point. This becomes body paragraph number three, which is where you discuss your third thesis point, and then you're going to have a conclusion. Okay, this is what we're aiming for. Five paragraphs. Five paragraph essay. Some of you might even remember this stuff from high school, right? The traditional five paragraph essay. Introduction, conclusion, three uh, paragraphs in between where you discuss one idea at a time in each paragraph. And those three ideas are going to be your, your three thesis points. So let me quickly bring up my completed Jeep essay. I think we took a sneak peek at this in week one. You'll have access to this full essay next week because next week you'll actually sit down and write the draft. Right now we're outlining. Uh, but here's the finished uh, essay, okay? So here's my introduction paragraph, all this. And my thesis is the final sentence of the introduction, right? It sets up what's to follow through the use of simple color, so first thesis point, playful imagery, second thesis point, and a double meaning tagline that reinforces theme third thesis point, the see whatever you want to see ad appeals to, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the reader, even if the reader isn't consciously thinking about it, the reader already knows in his or her mind that, oh, okay, this ad is going to be about color, imagery, tagline. And here's the first body paragraph, which is about the first thesis point, okay, color. So this paragraph is all about the ad's use of color. Okay, the ad is an exercise in simplicity, especially if you use color. Uh, the ad's creator has chosen a simple background of camel mesh. The ad's beige background brings to mind fabric and te textiles, burlap sack, tawny canvas tent, khaki clothing. The color might also suggest environment, dusty paths, windswept dunes. I'm not going to read my entire essay out loud, but do you see what's going on here? So, uh, three thesis points. Thesis point number one gets discussed in this paragraph. Thesis point number two, imagery, gets discussed in this paragraph. So I talk about the animal imagery, right? I describe it because, uh, I, did I mention this week one? Your, your audience is the general reader. Your audience is like a perfect stranger. Someone should be able to read your essay, read it from the first sentence to the last and never stumble. But it also means that you have to hold the reader's hand a little bit. So, yeah, I, I, I explain the imagery. This fair ad consists largely of empty space. Uh, when one looks at the ad right side up, a single a animal image stares back, a giraffe's head. When ro one rotates the ad and looks at it upside down, the image changes, and suddenly a standing penguin has taken its place. Okay, so I'm describing this because I'm, yeah, I don't assume that the reader already knows everything. And then I analyze. I explain its importance, right? Uh, the animal imagery is effective because it connects strongly to Jeep's overall brand. Only such a versatile automobile's, automobile's Jeep, the ad seems to suggest, could take one on a journey into the heart of the African plain or to the rocky tip of Tierra del Fuego to see giraffes and penguins up close. And then here's the final body paragraph on the ad's tagline. And then there's a conclusion paragraph. This is what you're aiming for. And I think let me do a quick word count. I think this is around 800 words. Uh, let's see, tools, word count. Okay, 925. You, this, you don't have to worry about this week because we're doing an outline, but yeah, come next week when you write the essay draft, we're looking at an essay of between 700 and 1400 words. So my essay, which is not that long, it's, yeah, almost three full pages. So three pages is about 900 words. You can do that. Okay, so we're not looking for a, I don't think I've ever seen someone hand in an essay that's like 1,200, 1,400 words, because that's like five, excuse me, five pages. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about APA and research a little bit today as well. Okay, but let me get back to the outline itself. So this is what we're doing, okay? 
the outline template is not a worksheet. You're not filling out, these are not prompts to be filled out randomly or in isolation. When it says paragraph, when, excuse me, Roman numeral one, yes, that means we're working on the first paragraph, the introduction paragraph. And I'm asking for three things. A one sentence hook, okay? Uh, enticing your audience to read more. In other words, give me an idea of how your paper might begin. Just a sentence, okay? How you think your paper might kick things off. Second, a concise description of the ad. Just a couple sentences, two or three, or four, but keep it short. This is not what you did in the worksheet, where it asked for a detailed summary explaining the ad as if to someone who's never seen it before. And a lot of people wrote, yeah, lengthy summaries. That's not this, okay? Because in an essay, nobody wants to read a ginormous paragraph where you explain, uh, where you take the reader second by second through the ad. No, this is a concise, you're giving people the gist, okay? And that's what I do here. Uh, where's my finished essay again? That's not it. <laughs> I have so many documents open. Here it is. Okay. So here's my introduction paragraph. Right. So like all this is kind of the hook. I'm just asking for, again, uh, a one sentence idea of how you're going to kick things off, but you'll come essay time, you'll develop it beyond just a single sentence. So all this is kind of my hook. Uh, and But here's my concise description. Okay. That's a print poster. It contains a reversible image in the center, sent against a beige mesh background. The reversible image is a vintage hand-drawn animal sketch, which looked at one way, looks like a giraffe, looked at another way, it's a penguin. The word Jeep, along with the ad's tagline, see whatever you want to see, appears above and below the central image, right side up on top, and upside down just below. There's my brief summary. Why do we include this? Because, again, this is for the general reader, the average person off the street. And, yeah, a few sentences that just explains the gist of the ad. So if, you've, if you're writing about the Call of Duty ad, just... A few sentences, right? This ad takes place in a battlefield where everyday people are waging war. Uh, that's a terrible way to word things, but you get it. G the gist, okay? So, yeah, two or three sentences, just a brief description of the ad. And then your thesis. So if you have an, if your thesis look great in your worksheet, this is where it goes. And here's my completed example. And as you can see, that's what I do here, okay? Here's my one sentence opening. Jeep, the well-known brand, practically markets itself with its reputation for ruggedness, independence, and adventure. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good opening sentence. Again, in the actual essay, I I build upon that sentence, but it, uh, yeah, just give me a one sentence preview of how you think your paper is going to begin. Here's my brief description of the ad. I think I have four sentences here, not two or three. So no, you're not going to get penalized if you write four sentences, but keep it brief. You're giving people the gist. And here's my thesis. Okay. And, and let me just stick with this completed example. Then you move on to Roman numeral two, which is your, your, your second paragraph. Okay. So first it asks for the topic sentence. So your topic sentence should make it clear what your first thesis point is. Remember, my first thesis point is simple color. So here's my topic sentence. The ad is an exercise in simplicity, especially in its use of color. After the topic sentence, I the temp the outline asks for one main idea you plan to make in support of this of this topic, a second point you plan to make, research. Yes, this is when you have to start doing research. We're going to talk about that uh, in a bit, okay? But yes, the idea here is that if you fill out this outline with care and you, again, have this example to study, is that you'll have all the pieces in place. Because if you have a clear thesis, you have three strong thesis points, you found research, then come week three, you already have the structure. You have the basic skeleton. All you have to do is hang flesh on that skeleton. But you've got all the pieces in place. Um, okay. Uh, and then it kind of repeats. Oh yeah, there's this thing, uh, ju just a sentence or two explaining how the research supports your claim. Okay. Just to make, this is for me and for you, just so you understand why the research is relevant. Uh, sometimes students drop in research and it's just, it's off topic. Um, in general, your research is going to work to support your thesis points. So in this section here, 
which is entirely about the ads use of color, I found some research on color. Okay, and then you repeat, you move on to the next paragraph, body paragraph number two, where you discuss your second thesis point. Present a topic sentence. Uh, here it's about the ads use of imagery, so that's made clear here in this topic sentence. One main point you plan to make in support of that idea, a second main point you plan to make uh, in support of that topic. Relevant research, I found a nifty quote about the ads imagery. Quote, when rotated, each of the vintage drawn animals becomes another species, leaving the viewer to choose which one he or she prefers, playing on the idea of perceptions. Yeah, that's a cool quotation. So, uh, a quick explanation of why this research is relevant. Then you move on to the next body paragraph. Okay, so this is body paragraph number three. And here you discuss your third thesis point. In this case, it's the ads tagline. So here's a topic sentence that makes it clear. The topic sentence, by the way, is kind of like the thesis for the paragraph. Just as a thesis previews the main points of the entire paper, a topic sentence establishes what the topic is for that given paragraph. All right, so if we look, and I'm sorry to keep going back and forth, but uh, where's my completed essay? <laughs> In this mess <laughs> of Microsoft Word documents, here it is. Okay, All right, so when you see the ad is an exercise in simplicity, especially in its use of color. That tells the reader this paragraph is about color. Here, the topic sentence tells the reader this entire paragraph is going to be about the ad's imagery. And here, that the entire paragraph is going to be about the ad's tagline. Okay, so you're doing the same thing with the outline. Okay. Yeah, you're just basically repeating. Okay, so the introduction has three things that it asks for. And then the body paragraphs. Topic sentence, one main point you plan to make. That's what it says when it says sentence describing a detail from the ad as part of the rhetorical strategy. That's just fancy speak for, please give me one main point you plan to make in that paragraph and give me another main point. Show me research, explain why the research is relevant, move on. Another topic sentence, two main points that you're going to make in support of that topic sentence, relevant research, repeat again. And finally, there's a conclusion paragraph where you rephrase your thesis statement Okay, don't use the exact same wording as before. And yeah, give me two or three sentences that you think would be a natural way to conclude your paper. You may not know entirely, but just take a stab at it. Okay, uh, do people understand the gist of what this outline is asking for? Because I do think it's a fairly straightforward assignment, but there are students who stumble at this stage and stumble badly. And sometimes it's because, again, they treat this template like a worksheet and they fill out these things in isolation. Um, yeah, again, just think about this, right? Five paragraphs, introduction, conclusion, three body paragraphs in between where you discuss your thesis points one at a time. That's what this outline template is covering. Okay, it's just stretched out more. Good. A couple of people are saying yes, they understand. Then I'm not going to belabor things. Let me quickly uh, go through some of these slides, and then we got to talk about research. Because, yeah, you need to conduct some research for this outline assignment. So welcome to week two. <laughs> I should have said that at the beginning. Uh, okay. This is just a reminder. Remember, we looked at this image in week one, that we are taking you through the steps of the writing process. Every week is devoted to a separate step. So last week, you worked on brainstorming, or two weeks ago. Okay. Here... This week, we're kind of in both of these arms here, researching and investigating, and yeah, organizing your material. That's the outline, okay? You're organizing your essay in advance. Next week, we'll get to writing the draft, and in week four, you'll get feedback and revise. Uh, your intended audience, again, it's that general reader, okay? Uh, actually, let me stop and give a real quick example of what I'm talking about. Uh, Because come essay time, or even in the outline, and I don't know, stop me if I covered this last week because I can't remember, but I see sentences that begin like this, in this, uh, in this ad, the guy is on his first day of work. Did I talk about this in the first lecture? I can't remember. I don't think so, right? Um, like literally, I see uh, an essay that begins this way. In this ad, the guy is on his first day of work. And then I have to be the mean instructor and say, what ad? What guy? What are you talking about? 
Um, and I'm not laughing because I'm making fun. No, we all do this. Um, but with time, with experience, you don't do it as often. Because what's happening in a sentence like this is to the writer, this makes complete sense. The, by the way, does anybody know what ad this is? Anybody want to take a guess? Show off. No, it's not the Jeep ad. Yeah, Cleo, it's the McDonald's ad. See, Sean said Salvation Army. This is the proof, okay? By the way, you're not wrong for saying uh, Salvation Army or Jeep, the, but you can't. You have no idea, right? To the student, though, the, this is perfectly clear. He knows he's writing about the McDonald's ad. I know, too, because I'm obviously familiar with all the ads and the approved list of ads. Um, but, yeah, this is not clear to the general reader. The general reader would be absolutely lost. So... Clear writing would be like this. In the McDonald's ad, first day, Andy, a young millennial, actually, isn't that kind of, aren't all millennials young? <laughs> I'll worry about that later. Andy, a young millennial, uh, feels anxious and overwhelmed on his first day day on the job. Okay. Can you see the difference? Does this make sense? Why this is hopelessly vague and would not make sense to, uh, you should, again, you should be able to pull a person off the street, have them read your essay from beginning to end, and they should never feel confused. They should never stumble. And seriously, read over your work from the perspective of someone who is not you. When you read your own writing, not just for this assignment, any writing that you do, uh, who do we have with us today? Imagine that you're not Elsa or Gregory or John or Khalil or Sean. Imagine that you're just some plain Jane or Joe Schmo, and you have accidentally stumbled upon this paper. Read it from that perspective. If you do, you'll spot things like this. Okay? Uh, now, yes, you do have to hold the reader's hand, but you don't have to explain, like, McDonald's is a fast food restaurant. <laughs> Okay, your your readers aren't stupid. But yes, give them concrete details. Do not assume that the things that are so clear in your head automatically make sense to someone else. Okay? Uh, yeah, I pause to do this because I see it every month. Where I understand what the writer is saying, but no one else would. Okay, let me get back to my lecture thingy. So yes, your audience is the general reader. And seriously, do that. Pretend you're not you when you read your own work. You'll catch so many things. Okay. Uh, what is an essay? <laughs> Actually, an essay can be anything, right? A video could te technically be an essay. Uh, but yes, for this class, it's a short piece of nonfiction writing on a particular subject, specifically ad analysis. Uh, Gregory before said Honda. Uh, Gregory, I know you're, I think you're playing catch up. Make sure that you do read through all the, make sure you watch the week one lecture and make sure that you read through all those getting started things because the ad that you choose for this class has to come from that approved list. Okay. There's an approved list of, I think, what, eight ads maybe or seven ads. And you choose one of those. Okay. Actually, you know what? I'm going to fly through these slides because I want to get to research because I've already covered this stuff. By walking through the actual outline assignment, yeah, we've covered this. Essay structure means an introduction, support, so that's that middle stuff, the middle paragraphs, and a conclusion, okay? Kind of like a sandwich. Introduction, conclusion, middle paragraphs in between. That's why it's crucial to think in threes. You have to have three strong analysis points in your thesis statement because those three points are going to become your body paragraphs. And an introduction, yes, it's, that sets the stage for the rest of the essay. And it ends with your thesis statement. The introduction is not the place to start analyzing. So if you're discussing the Call of Duty ad and its use of music, right? Why it uses the Rolling Stones song, Gimme Shelter. The introduction is not the place to start answering those questions. Okay? It, this is the place to set the table. And I'm sorry to go back and forth so many times. I know it drives people crazy. Ah, I can't exit. Here we go. Uh, where's my cheap ad? Here, let me get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. Uh, I'm going to close that too. So here's the introduction for the cheap essay. I'm not going to read the whole thing out loud. Obviously, it's a long paragraph. But yeah, there's no analysis here. I'm not talking about the, you know, why the ad uses earth tones. 
or why uses animal imagery. No, it's all introductory. Okay, so here is my opening move where I just riff on the idea of Jeep. Okay, we all know what Jeep brings to mind. Then there's my brief description of the ad, just so the general reader knows what it's about. And then my thesis. Okay, so yeah, the introduction is a general paragraph. It kicks things, kicks things off. A lot of you may know that, but I do see several people come essay time. They start out analyzing right here in the introduction. No, that's not the place for that. Okay, it's the body of the essay, which is where you develop your ideas. Okay, this is where research is probably going to appear. It's not that research cannot appear in the introduction or conclusion. I actually use a quotation in my opening paragraph for the Jeep essay because I found a nifty quote about how Jeep is one of the most copied or the most copied American vehicle. Uh, that seemed kind of cool because it seemed like just a, a fun quote that reinforces the idea that, yes, Jeep is a very popular brand. Uh, yeah, but mostly it's going to appear in your body. Okay, the body paragraphs. Research is mostly going to work to support your three thesis points. And then a conclusion where you echo your thesis, your main ideas. And yeah, it says set your readers down gently. I sometimes like to say find the right final note to end on. And my essay, again, you'll have access to this in week three. You also have the previous student's Diet Coke essay. Uh, yeah, my conclusion is pretty short, but here's where I reword the thesis. Okay, so it's not in the same form as in the introduction. The ad's basic elements, color, imagery, wording, tagline, in other words, produce maximum results. And then, yeah, I find a couple sentences to hopefully bring the essay to a satisfying close. The ad successfully communicates brand essentials without ever stating so directly. It taps into the viewer's subconscious and allows the ad's elements to do their work appealing to customers' desires to enjoy the rewards that the Jeep brand offers. Okay. There. Okay, Gregory, you chose the Stork ad. Yeah, uh, if you if you watched the week one lecture, I said that's the toughest ad. I'm not trying to scare you away from it. It's just that, yeah, the Stork. I like it when students tackle it because print ads, I think, are more challenging. I should say more challenging. It's a different challenge than a television commercial. Television commercials have sound, they have movement, they have characters sometimes, they even have kind of like stories, right? If you watch the McDonald's first day ad, it kind of tells a story. Andy's on his first day at work, he's feeling overwhelmed. Uh, he escapes to McDonald's and finds relief. Okay, there's a character, there's a story. It's minimal, it's a very short. I forget how long the commercial is. can't remember if it's 30 seconds or a minute. But yeah, uh, there are lots of things to talk about. In a print ad, you have to be comfortable on some level analyzing visual information, talking about color or layout or uh, imagery or placement of, of things. Well, that's layout. But yeah, you have to be comfortable talking about uh, visual elements because that's all you have, right? You don't have sound. You don't have movement. You don't have characters usually. Uh, anyway, thesis statements, we talked about this in week one, right? I gave uh, a couple examples. This we've already gone over to, okay? That when we're talking about those body paragraphs, those middle paragraphs, you begin with a topic sentence. I know that your readings for this week say that the topic sentence can appear anywhere in the paragraph. That's true. But for this class, I do think it's a good idea to begin with your topic sentence later when you're more comfortable. Sure. When I write, I do not think consciously about thesis or topic sentence. I just write. But that's because I'm doing these formal things automatically. But yes, I do think it's a good idea to begin with your topic sentence, uh, to begin the body paragraph, because it's like the thesis. It establishes what the paragraph is going to be about. And yeah, this is where you explain things. This is where you'll include research, okay, evidence, and end with a link. Uh, I like to call that like a cincher sentence. Uh, that, yes, uh, I'm sorry. I, it's best when I show examples. So uh, here's the Jeep ad. Here's paragraph, uh, no, 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 here. Paragraph number one on the ad's use of color. Okay. And probably you're going to follow a, fim, a similar strategy. Establish the topic, color. Describe the ad. Okay, the, the, the reader, maybe they've seen the ad, maybe not, but take the time to explain things. 
Okay, so here I described the ad and what it's doing in terms of color. And then I get into analysis, okay, that it uses earth tones. But here's my center sentence, okay? This is where I tie everything together. The color scheme works to promote the rugged off-roading image that the ad campaign's creators clearly desire. Or this one, which I read earlier. I won't read it out, out loud again, okay, about the ad's imagery. Ultimately, yeah, you're going to wrap things up. That's what this means by link. Let me fly through this. Okay, research. You need three sources. Okay, when I say sources, I mean quality sources. We're talking articles, essays. Uh, a YouTube video could work if it's yeah, a quality video. Um, what doesn't count as quality? Wikipedia, IMDb, basically things that are more like encyclopedias or dictionaries. Uh, I think it's fine to go to Wikipedia to if you want to scroll down to the references section. Sean says, how much experience are you talking about? I'm confused. Uh, I must have said something, but w what experience? Again, I'm sure I'm just not hearing myself having for writing in terms of what like experience are you, are you referring back to when i was saying that i've been writing long enough that i can do things oh to write without structure yeah 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 um it's different for every person sometimes i have students in my class who are already at that stage um oh gosh it's so difficult to explain it's when you feel like yeah you're in full control of basically here's a good test if what I've been discussing this hour is already crystal clear to you, if you're right now thinking, oh my God, I can't believe he's <laughs> covering topic sentences and five paragraph structure, I I can already do this in my sleep, then yeah, you probably don't have to worry so much about these things. But most people do. Uh, after all, if everybody, could, everybody knew how to write, we wouldn't have any need for English classes. And by the way, I'm not trying to convert people into being English majors. I don't care that much about ad analysis. I care about what ad analysis teaches about writing basics because these basics, having some sort of introduction or a beginning, having some sort of conclusion or an ending, and having information in between presented one topic at a time, this is going to help you with whatever writing task you have. I mean, think of even an inter-office memo, okay? It has an introduction. It might be only one sentence, but it has an introduction. It doesn't, it doesn't start in the beginning of things. It even has maybe not a formal thesis, but it has a main point. Dear employees, we are writing to inform you about changes to the 401k plan. Okay, maybe that's the introduction and thesis. <laughs> but yes, it, has, it doesn't just jump into the middle. And then it presents the changes to the 401k plan one at a time. And then there's some sort of conclusion. Okay, so if you think about these basics, yeah, they apply to just about any situation. So I want you to be able to, in future classes or in your future life, be able to follow this basic structure, have some sort of opening, discuss ideas one at a time. Okay, We don't mix se uh, several different topics in the same paragraph. That is chaotic for the reader. Uh, but yeah, I, I think these are incredibly useful to learn these basics. But yeah, to be able to write without consciously thinking about these things, Sean, Probably, yeah, if a lot of what I'm saying is old hat, uh, that's probably a good sign. And it just comes with experience. Like I said, the more you write, the better you get at it. Uh, where was I? I don't even know. <laughs> Research is sport. Okay, you need three sources. Oh, I remember what I was going to show. Okay, so Wikipedia is a no-no. But let's say, let's say you're writing about Call of Duty, okay? And you're, one of your thesis points, one of your three analysis points is the ad's use of music. Why does the ad use the Rolling Stones song, Gimme Shelter? Sure, it's upbeat. It's a well-known song. It matches the ad in terms of mood. That's part of it. But any song could, could do that, right? Why this song? Why that? Why give me shelter? Why not? I don't know. A contemporary song that also has got an upbeat rock sound. Um, you should probably do some research and figure out why. So let's say you do like what lots of people do. You go to Google and you start typing things like uh, give me shelter. 
Oh, hang in with me. I'm having the same problem I had in week one where my computer is being overworked. Okay. Uh, let's see. Wikipedia, right? Again, Wikipedia is not a trusted source. It's not that it's always bad. Sometimes you can kind of tell that a Wikipedia entry is well-written and it's being written by people who are probably experts. But other times, yeah, it feels like it's written by teenagers in their garage. So, no, we don't quote from Wikipedia. But if you want to go down to the references section and see if there's any any good stuff there, that's perfectly fine. Oh, I don't know what is hogging my computer. Here, let me try to close this. That might have helped. I had a website open that. Okay, so look, it, we're talking about a single song here, and we have, I don't know, 70 references. So yeah, go through. You might find some interesting things here. Okay, uh, the Rolling Stone Keith Richards look back on 40 years of making music. Maybe he talks about the song there. I don't know. Um, you do have one source, one of the three given to you if you want to use it, and it's this guy here. I believe we have it in just about all of the major writing activities. It's a video on pathos, ethos, logos, and ad advertising. Yeah, use this. After all, you, you need three sources, so why not take the one that's given to you? Please, though, if you do use this source, which is perfectly fine, do something more interesting with it than just telling me pathos is the appeal to emotion. <laughs> that's, basic, that's just a basic definition, okay? For one, you could have said that without watching the video, okay? And a definition of a word is not really research. So yes, please pull something more interesting from the video than defining a term. But yes, please use this uh, this video if you wish to as one of your three sources. I am still struggling here with... <laughs> what can I shut down? You know what? I'm going to take a risk and just ditch the slides entirely because maybe cl a closing keynote will help. I don't have that many things open. Bear with me, people. I apologize. Is this closed? Okay, I think it's... It might be the go-to software itself that's hogging things. Um, but okay, if we look at my finished Jeep essay, I have six sources. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I didn't even use the pathos, ethos, and logos in advertising. Do you have to have this many sources? No. You just need three. And yes, you can use that pathos, ethos, and logos video. But, oh, I should mention, uh, maybe I mentioned I said this in week one, but I completed all these assignments because I wanted to see what it was like. I think it's incredibly valuable if an instructor does the same assignments he or she asks the students to do. And yeah, I was a little bit cocky. I, I found the Jeep ad. I liked it and thought, you know what? I'll bang this out. <laughs> I can probably do this in a couple hours. No, it took me. Yeah, I am a procrastinator. So I kind of did it in one session, but I, it took me like 12 hours. And it took me several hours just to find these sources. So that's one thing. You're not going to do research in five minutes. Okay, It's going to take time because one of my three thesis points was the ads use of color. So I did research into color theory, but obviously I can't just grab anything. I have to find something that's relevant. So yeah, it took me two, it took me a while to find these first two sources here, color theory for designers and color and emotion, because both had kind of cool quotes on specifically earth tones and what they mean. So that helped support my specific comments about the Jeep ad, right? Cause it uses earth tones. Uh, and then I found some other stuff here. But yeah, six sources. And it took me hours. Okay? So that's one thing. Because we're going to... I'm going to show you the Full Sail Library database. So if you go into Full Sail Connect and log in, one of your sources should come from the Full Sail Library database. So one can be that video. One should come from the database. And one can be a quality source that you find online. Again, an article, an essay from a trustworthy source. Trustworthy can be anything from Rolling Stone to CNN to, okay, yeah. If you're, if you're in any doubt whether you've found something that's trustworthy, just send me a message and I can take a look at it and tell you. But, okay, we're on the Full Sail Connect page. If you scroll down, you just click on Library. 
Yeah, Sean, I have to use Google Chrome, even if it is a memory hog, because Safari doesn't like, uh, I think it's McGraw-Hill. So, okay, so under library, we click, we click on research databases. You have a whole bunch of databases. Um, EBSCOhost, which is not a database, it's actually an umbrella of several databases, like Academic Search Complete, uh, Business Source Complete. But yeah, you can search all of them at once. You also have what was formerly known as LexisNexis. It is now called Nexus Uni. Okay, Nexus Uni tends to search more like newspapers, um, everyday kind of sorts of things, and EBSCOhost tends to search more often magazines and journals. So I'm going to begin with EBSCOhost. Okay, and you can search all these databases at once just by selecting all. Now, remember when I said it took me hours to find those research sources? I say that because, yes, I already have something that I know is going to trigger a specific result. It is not going to be this fast for you. <laughs> so give me shelter. I'll keep using the Call of Duty. Anyway, by the way, is anybody here writing about the Call of Duty ad? Call of Duty. Okay. Uh John is okay. Um, yeah, a lot of people choose the Call of Duty ad, and I don't know. I don't want to speak too much about it because I don't want to give people ideas. But I'm going to use Call of Duty as an example here, and specifically the ad's choice in music. Um, remember when I said that it could have chosen any upbeat song? So why does it choose "Gimme Shelter"? If anybody wants to take a stab at that in the chat, feel free to do so. Help your fellow students. I'm not going to give the answer outright, but if you come up with it, <laughs> that's fine. Okay, so we got three search results. Um, you might have 100 search results. If you do, you can do uh, things like click full text, because that will eliminate any results that aren't truly available. You can also drag this thing here. Okay, here I don't have a huge publication date range because I only have three sources, but if you have like 500 results, you can limit the date range to let's say five years or three years and trim those results. But yeah, I'm specifically, Sean says, shelter is very happy in a co combat situation. Okay, yeah, that's part of it, right? The song is speaking about war. Uh, I think there's, yeah, I think we're two thirds of the way there. It fits the, the song in terms of mood, right? It's upbeat. It's rocking. It's definitely singing about war. But there's uh, another big thing that's out there, I think, uh, especially if you consider when Call of Duty Black Ops is set. Okay, so I found this. Here's this article called Gimme Sales from Billboard. Obviously, you have to go in. You have to read it. One of the reasons why it took me probably about four hours to find my research sources is because, yeah, I had to read lots of sources and, 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 and realize, no, this won't work. This is a pretty short article. And at first glance, it doesn't seem very useful. It's not really explaining like why the song was chosen, what relevance it has. But there is this information here. Okay. According to Activision Vice President of Music Affairs, Tim Riley, scoring, he means getting, give me shelter, for the ad was no small feat. Uh, New York based, I'm sorry, I have to move my control panel, it's blocking. New York based APCO holds the rights to the song and as is common, blah, 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 uh, wanted to view an early edit of the ad before giving permission. So Activision flew to New York to show a clip of the ad on a secure laptop. Uh, what's more, for the first time in Activision history, it allowed another company to make edits to the ad itself in order to obtain approval from the band members. So the Rolling Stones themselves had to give approval. Okay, this is not explaining why the song is appropriate for this ad, but it is kind of tangentially interesting because it does point to evidence that, wow, they wanted this song, right? After all, they could have chosen any upbeat song <laughs> or to even address Sean's point. They could have found another song that kind of invokes images of war or shelter. No, they want this song. What was it about this song? Okay, this article doesn't answer it. But this might be a secondary piece of research that you include. Okay? Because, yeah, they want this. The, clearly, they wanted this song. <laughs> they were willing to fly out to New York to show an early edit of the ad to the rights holders 
to even show an ad to the band members of the Rolling Stones to get approval, that's a long way to go <laughs> to get permission. So what is it about this song? I think it's more than just that it's cool. Uh, Sean says, this is why research takes a long time. You can get easily distracted. Yeah, that's true too. If you're like me, one click leads you to another link, right? That takes you to another link. And suddenly you're researching, I don't know, speedboats at 3 a.m. instead of doing research for your paper. <laughs> Uh, yeah, stay focused. Okay. Uh, but let me go back to the, oh gosh, I'm taking too long. I try to keep these things down to an hour. You have to use APA format. Here's my advice. You can study my Jeep example. The references are in APA format. So just imitate. Okay. Author's last name, first initial, a date in parentheses, the title of the article the title of the magazine or publication in italics, a URL, a web address. Okay. If you find something useful in the database, I have no problem with you using the site tool. Okay. But you do have to fix the mistakes that it makes. For example, if I click site, yes, it gives me the APA citation, but it makes lots of mistakes. For example, it loves to put author's names in all caps. That's not correct. Sometimes it loves to put the article title itself in all caps. That would be incorrect. Actually, there is a small problem here with the article title because the S in sales is not supposed to be capitalized. But sure, you can grab it. And let me add this to my already completed references page. Her name was Donahue. It goes in alphabetical order, so it would go here. Okay. By the way, when this, if you're using Microsoft Word, when the clipboard appears, if you click Match Destination Formatting, it will automatically put it in the correct font size and style. So I have to fix things. This should not be in all caps. Almost no one remembers this rule, but you'll impress me if you can. Unlike MLA, you do not capitalize every major, major important word in a title. You only you capitalize as you would a normal sentence. So the G in gimme stays capitalized because you would capitalize the first letter in the beginning of a sentence. But the S in sales would actually be lowercase. And as you can see, that's what's happening here. Okay. In MLA, the T in theory, the D in designers, not the F and four, because little words like that don't get capitalized, would be capitalized. Not in APA. Again, you capitalize just as you would a regular sentence. You will impress me a lot if you can remember that. Uh, so okay. I've grabbed the citation from the citation tool. The last thing we need is a retrieve from line. And you have a couple options. You can either grab the permalink or just tell me the name of the, uh, what's the word, database, which here is business source complete. Okay, so retrieve from business source complete. Okay. There's also this website called projectapa.info. I'm also going to paste it into the chat. I recommend clicking on it and saving it. Because not you just you, it's not just reference page you have to create for the outline. Okay, actually, that's the essay. Where's my outline? Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, okay, here's the outline. And yes, the outline at the very end, you have to put references. My advice, again, is to copy the references on the Jeep uh, example. But you also need the in-text citations. So when it asks for a piece of research, this is where you have to create an in-text citation. Now, the week three lecture is going to cover, it's completely devoted to APA next week's session, session. I know it's not the sexiest topic, but I promise it might be the most useful because I will literally open up a blank Microsoft Word document, show you how to set up the document in terms of spacing, in terms of a header, in terms of font size, all that stuff to make the paper look the way it should. I'm also going to create in real time in-text citations and references. Here's my promise to you for the outline. I just want you to make a solid attempt at APA. Points will be lost when I just see you making up a style. 
But because we haven't gone in depth into APA, yeah, I'm not going to be nitpicky about small things you get wrong. But I'm going to point you to, yeah, again, if you're – copy the Jeep examples, okay? Open up the Jeep outline because you have it as a downloadable asset and imitate, okay? Or go to projectapa.info, and if you click on the very first category here, in-text citations, imitate – these examples. So for example, here are two ways to use a quotation. And we're going to get into this next week because it's, yeah, it's a little bit hairy. <laughs> for example, you always have two options. You can mention the author's name in your actual sentence, like according to Newman or according to John Newman. If you do that, you immediately have to put a year in parentheses. Then you deliver your quotation. And at the end of the quotation, you put a page or paragraph number. Paragraph number would apply to, for example, uh, that article I found through the database, right? It's just one page. There are no page numbers, so you count the paragraphs to find out where the quotation is. Or you just find your own natural way to present the quotation and save everything for the end. Author's name, a year, page or paragraph number. Uh, yeah, so copy one of these or look at the cheap example and copy one of those. So, for example, here's an example where I don't use the author's name in my sentence. The ad encourages viewer interaction, comma, for, quote, when rotated, blah, 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 rest of the quote. And then at the end, author's last name, year, page, or paragraph number. In this case, it's a paragraph number. Okay. Earlier, uh, same thing. Okay. In design, muted earth tones are, quote, usually reserved for backgrounds. Chapman, 2010, page 42. Okay. Cousins, 2012, paragraph four for these two quotations. Um, so I, I I don't know how to explain this. I don't want to blow off APA. It's just that I know that next week's lecture is going to be completely devoted to it. Um, do you feel confident that either by studying the examples in the Jeep uh, outline or by using projectapa.info, you can give it a good, pardon the pun, college try? In other words, I do not expect perfection. I just want to look and say, yeah, okay, it's not perfect, but yes, they are, they're trying to follow APA. And then next week, we'll absolutely get into the specifics because APA is not difficult, I promise you. But yes, if you're unfamiliar with it, it seems like a bunch of random and idiosyncratic and crazy rules. It's not, but it, it does take time, I think, to explain it. And next week is when I'll explain it in full. The logic behind it, the foundation, and in real time, I will create in-text citations, references, uh, etc. But yes, for the outline, give it your best shot, okay? Use the examples, use projectapa.info, and just don't make up your own thing. Like if I see references and you have no references, it's just web addresses dropped in. Yeah, that's going to make me think, okay, this person didn't try. So I don't expect perfection. I just expect, I don't know, 80% correctness or 85% correctness. So we've gone a few minutes over. I really do try to keep these to an hour because I lose people after an hour. Uh, so questions, comments, either about the outline assignments, about research, about anything about the class as a whole. Now's the time to ask. If you are comfortable with what we've discussed, I thank you so much for attending. You are allowed to leave. You don't have to stick around if you don't want to. And I thank you for attending. I am going to hang out for a bit, though, and respond to questions if people have them. Okay? Yeah, my major piece of advice is study the models. I think that's maybe the most frustrating thing as an instructor every month is that even if you are confused by the lectures or you've never heard things like thesis statements, you have these examples that you can study. Every single writing assignment comes with examples, usually two examples, my Jeep examples and the Diet Coke, the past student work on Diet Coke. So next week you'll have two sample essays, the Diet Coke essay and my Jeep essay to study. You can learn a tremendous amount from just looking at finished examples and trying to do the same thing. Khalil says, when it comes to the suggested thesis that you offered in my critique for last week's workshop, how much am I able to use them? Uh, yeah, Khalil, I'll have to... I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. 
I like to keep the recording going because sometimes people ask useful questions. But Cleo, in order to answer yours, I'd have to go into your worksheet, and I don't want to do that with the recording still running. Actually, I don't want to do it with other people even in the room because then they'd see my feedback. They'd see your grade. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Khalil, I mean, maybe either you can just generally remind me what your situation was. Did I like your thesis? Did you have an issue? Did I say that your thesis is mostly on track, but one of its points could be clear? Or you could just send me a message through the FSL platform asking more specific things. John says, why didn't you change the letter in billboard to lowercase? Oh, okay, good question. The special capitalization rules only apply to the article title. Okay, for example, here, I'm just going to make up a reference in real time, even though I'm going to do this next week too. It always has the same format. Last name, first initial of the author, so John Smith. In parentheses, a date. A single year is fine when it's something that's not published that often, like, a, I don't know, a quarterly journal. If it's published, let's say, on a website or a daily newspaper, something that's published frequently, you should put a full date, like December 12th. Okay, But some sort of date goes in parentheses. Then the article title appears. So let's imagine that there's a, a title called The Road. Road ahead. The Road behind. Okay. In MLA, this is how it would be capitalized. In APA, no. We capitalized article titles just as we would a regular sentence. So all this gets lowercase. But let's say it appeared in Forbes, okay? Forbes magazine. This does not follow the special capitalization rules. Okay? So we we first of all, Forbes or Billboard, those are proper nouns. We would capitalize those words anyway. Even if they appear in the middle of a sentence, we would we would not put the word billboard in lowercase. But let's say it's an, it's a, a publication that has several words to it, like Rolling Stone. Okay, Rolling Stone is a proper noun. Proper noun is like a pe person's name, a day of the week, a month of the year. Yeah, Rolling Stone. The entire name is a proper noun. So both the R and the S are not put in lowercase. Okay, it's only article titles. And then after the publication name, then comes your retrieved from line. Okay, so for example, retrie what am I doing wrong here? Retrieve I before E <laughs> from uh, academic source complete. Okay, so there's the basic structure of a reference. Now, it needs to be double spaced. When it goes to a second or third line, it needs to be indented. So I'm going to drag the little bottom of this hourglass half an inch. But yeah, there's a reference. So, and we're going to get into this next week. I'm going to use more examples. Uh, but yeah, author's name, year, article title, capitalized just as you would a regular sentence, publication name, italicized, retrieve from. Really, it's a breeze. It is so simple. Good question, though. Yes, for in-text citations, lowercase p, period, space, 42, like I'm just inventing a page number, or paragraph, also lowercase, period, space, paragraph 5. Okay. So a citation might look like this. Smith, 2012. Oops. Oops page 42. Notice comma separate each one. I see this a lot too where things are smashed together. No, space after a comma, space after the period. Okay. Or Jones 2015 comma paragraph 5. And yeah, for now if if you're confused about the two options, remember I said if you use the author's name in your sentence, there's a slightly different format. If you want to make it simple, just, yeah, deliver your quotation and put this sort of information at the end. And next week we'll get into, yeah, what do you do if there's no author's name? What do you do if there's no date? Okay, there are rules for handling that. For example, if there's no date, we use the abbreviation N period, D period, which stands for no date. 
If there is no author's name, we use the first two to three words of the article title in quotation marks. So, for example, the road ahead. Oh, and punctuation, almost always. There's some rare instances where it's not the case, but almost always it goes inside the quotation marks, not outside. Okay. So, yeah. Does this stuff make sense? I always feel bad in this week two lecture because I do feel like I'm dropping the ball in APA. It's just I can't cover everything during this lecture. So I save APA for week three and just people tell people to, yeah, just give it your best shot. Use the cheap example. Use projectapa.info and try to get it 80% or better correct. Major points are lost when people just make up their own citations or references. They don't look at it. The examples, they don't look at projectdp.info. They, yeah, they just, they wing it. Okay, so that's the thing. My, my promise to you is that you can still receive a high grade as long as you are making it clear that you're mostly following APA. And next week, because it will be fully devoted, the lecture to APA, that's when, when you write your essay draft, that I'll expect things to be nearly perfect. So this week, I just want you to make, again, no pun intended, a good college try. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording because people are watching this. I think they learned a lot even just from this discussion here. I'm hoping people hung around in the recording to see me create these examples. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording because it's at an hour and 10 minutes already. Now. <laughs>